onward to some fucking weird shit. Because this is and and you guys know uh if you're if you're seeing the title here what the hell happened to Tulsi Gabbard uh you guys know I've complained about Tulsi's uh recent policies. Uh you know, it was it, 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 Missy Missy Winston and I talked about it. Comrade Missy and I talked about it. it it's very very strange. And and if you are um it, you know you are somebody that cares and are principled, it doesn't matter what politician you claimed as your favorite politician. And I'm not shy about saying that I supported Tulsi uh, in 2019. I absolutely did. And then she started becoming a disappointment in 2020, uh, you know, when she stopped running and basically backed Biden and now is slowly making this, this has slowly been making this shift to the right, where last December I was, you know, she kind of, stepped away from Congress, and right before she did, uh, she had put these bills out um, uh, about Assange, protecting Assange, and why it's important that the United States doesn't extradite Julian Assange. And she got conservatives on board with that. And I was like, holy shit, wow, okay, that's awesome. And then right after that, she came out with this Title IX bullshit where she wanted to exclude trans athletes from getting uh, scholarships, sports scholarships, which might be the only way that these kids get to go to college because America is a country where college is so expensive that you need to have some kind of skill that the college can exploit in order for you to get some kind of deal on education, right? And so in order for them to get these scholarships, to get the education they want, Tulsi Gabbard basically said, no, you, they, they shouldn't because they're trans athletes, and hormones and biology and so on and so forth. Instead of thinking, well, what's an inclusive way we could make this work, right? It was, let, let's exclude. And it was very strange because she had a 100% rating with the HRC. She put out these bills that helped the LGBT community. So what the fuck happened? Why did she make this super 180? And it's gotten worse, right? Like this year, it's gotten significantly worse. Like every time she's put out something, I'm like, like where the fuck is this coming from? This is like the polar opposite of the type of shit you were saying when you were running for president. Like the polar opposite of the shit that made me go, hell yeah, man, that's that's awesome. I'm glad to hear a politician say shit like that. She was anti-war. She was pro-universal health care. So let's go through it, right? Uh I'm going to try something new. All right, cool. So here we go. Maybe I'll go to this screen. Yep. I haven't done this presentation thing, so hopefully it works out okay. Uh, so this is the quote from uh, my good friend Lee Camp. Uh, he says, we've seen a near 180 from Tulsi Gabbard this year. Her opinions on many subjects are now indecipherable from Fox News, which is why they've been inviting her on regularly. Lee Camp, a political comedian who's followed Tulsi Gabbard's uh, career trajectory closely, told Ben Press, adding, many of her tweets seem to pretend race is not an issue in America, a country with overwhelming white supremacist foreign and domestic policy. Much of her ire and concern has shifted from those without health care to those refugees coming through our, quote, open borders. Uh, Tulsi now feeds into the toxic nationalism and xenophobia that has allowed the American empire to abuse other people's cultures for generations, ironically, including white America's annexation of her home state, Hawaii. So uh, let's look at some of these flips, right? We're going to look at some of the flips that uh, that she's had. Uh, first and foremost is the anti-war flip. That was the biggest thing that that made me support Tulsi Gabbard was the fact that she was a vehement anti-war anti-war politician uh the late great mike gravel somebody that everybody should should follow and learn about um he was he was saying that the two candidates in in the in the 2020 uh political theater show that we were all being witness to the do, 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 uh, the two candidates that he thought had the most merit and qualifications to lead were bernie sanders and Tulsi Gabbard, because of their uh, anti-interventionist, anti-regime change wars, uh, anti-war foreign policies. That's why. And, and that was one of the reasons why I was like, holy shit, she is critical of the United States military. She is critical of the regime change wars. Uh, 
uh, and she's and she's saying them outright. Uh, and she's talking about economic sanctions being economic warfare, something we that America does nonstop against countries that they don't like, socialist democracies that don't allow them to come in and and just take resources willy nilly, right? Uh, the, what, any country that doesn't let that let America treat their nation like a fucking playground is an enemy and gets economic sanctions put on them. Does this country is just a fucking bully? So, um, let's 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 check this out, right? So she goes on. Uh, she goes on deployment, right? Uh, Alan McLeod wrote this article in the Mid Press News, and he reports that that possibly the the heel turn was accelerated by her. Uh, her recent deployment to the Horn of Africa, right, uh, which she called special operations missions to go after Al Qaeda affiliated jihadists, jihadists, which is a uh, very nebulous terminology. It sounds very cool, right? It sounds like something you'd see on a bumper of a fucking action movie. A special operation missions to go after Al Qaeda affiliated jihadists this summer. White savior, the American dick measuring story, right? Like that's what it. And then she goes on on Fox News, and that's all she talks about, right? That's all she talks. She just talks about the 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 jihadists, and she makes rationalizations for targeted drone strikes. Let me see if that's the next presentation here. Yeah. So this is what she said about this is what she that she has said about this. this is, and this is a total one eighty from her policies before. Her policies before. Uh, we're talking about how shit like this needs to stop. Regime change wars, where we go into countries claiming that we're going after terrorists, is really about acquiring resources and toppling governments. And that, and we've seen that with with the failures in Afghanistan, right? The failures in Iraq, the failure that is Syria, the failures in Yemen. The, the, this is constant. She and she was vehemently talking about this in 2019. So. Now she's on Fox News saying, I think it's important for the American people to understand that Islamist jihadists are continuing to wage war against us. Uh, then barely acknowledging the slain Afghan children were not terrorists, right? Because there was a drone bomb and they killed civilians. Holy shit, is that a shocker? Oh man, if you paid attention to anything WikiLeaks put out, you would know that this is a standard for the American military to, 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 to launch bombs via drones and kill civilians Nonstop. It's what most drone bombings do. I mean, you can say it; they don't, but then you'd just be lying to yourself. And that's fine if you just want to keep lying to yourself and living in your own ignorant little bubble uh, where America is the great white savior. Uh, but that ain't the reality that the rest of the world is in, right? Syria, we just saw that. 70 civilians were killed in 2019, and, and, the, and the Pentagon covered it up. She goes on to say, we have to work to defeat them militarily and ideologically. And militarily, we have two choices in how we do that. Number one, we can continue to invade and occupy in nation-building countries around the world, just as we did in Afghanistan at great cost. Number two, we can take a targeted approach using airstrikes, using our special forces, to go in and go after these terror cells invade and occupy in nation building like we did in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is an objective failure. It is an objective failure from the start of it. And that goes all the way back to the 80s. There's, there, there's almost no goddamn mention of, of that. The fact that they were a prospering socialist democracy where women had more rights in Afghanistan in the 70s and 80s than American women have now. Because their government wasn't actively trying to take their reproductive rights away. And America funded what became Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. They armed them. They trained them. Why? Because the, the, the leader of Afghanistan wanted to talk to Russia. Because maybe the leader of Afghanistan thought the Cold War was bullshit. <clears throat> so they destabilized the country. Taliban comes in. We abandoned them. They feel abandoned because they were and and you know the rest as they say is history
Invade and occupy for nation building. That's called imperialism. That's called regime change. That is the shit that she was against in 2019. And that's a total 180. Total 180 flip from what she was saying in 2019. And earlier, too. It wasn't just 2019 she was saying that. Her career was built on anti-interventionism and anti-imperialism. Let's go to the next slide. So then we have the Modi connection, right? Uh, and, I, and I've talked about the Modi connection before. Um, and one of the things that Alan McCloyd brings up is the uh, the fact that in 2014, when Modi was elected, um, and there was this big fucking to-do about bringing him into the States and so on and so forth. And, and there's a couple of things to note with this thing, right? Uh, the United States said that they weren't going to let him in because of the atrocities that he was responsible for in Gujarat uh, in 20, I want to say 2011 or 2012. I, I can't remember the exact date. It was before he, be, when he was CM of Gujarat, when he was the government governor of Gujarat, um, basically, there was the, a Hindu mob slaughtered uh, innocent Muslims because he never made a distinction between Muslims and terrorists, right? And this is a problem with Hindu nationalism. This is a problem with Hindus. Uh, in 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 a, they don't have to be nationalists. Even even just mainstream Hindus have a disdain for for Islam and Muslims without actually understanding or talking to them, right? Uh, which which again is fundamentally not Hindu. Uh, so, couple things. This is hypocritical. You're you're going to deny a a a uh, elected leader because they committed an atrocity. America is going to do that. Are you fucking kidding? I mean, the hypocrisy that you like you just have to ignore in order to be okay with this decision is outrageous. America is responsible for slaughtering so many Native Americans and stealing their land, and you're going to sit there and chastise Modi for that. Not only that, but uh, when he was elected, uh, rather when he was running to be elected, the Muslim community forgave him. They said, look, this guy it seems like he wants to do better, and, and we're going to give him that opportunity, so we're going to forgive him for his past uh, dis discretions. And uh, and move forward accordingly, right? And he came out and he apologized and he made this statement about his mistakes and he said that he should have uh, come out and and spoke out against that sort of extremism. But I mean, none of that mattered. He's been a huge letdown to, to the to the Muslim community. Um, just look at what's going on in Kashmir, right? He he is he has turned Kashmir into the most militarized place on earth. Uh, and all of that is to control demographics, and India is headed to being an apartheid state just like Israel. Not only that, though, but after that, after he was elected and everything, like they did bring him over here because they realized they needed India for business connections. The farm laws from the last segment, man. They need him to write those laws so that American corporations can come in and secure cheap labor. Uh, that That's why they need Modi around. Now, the BJP, uh, there was a prominent BJP member at her wedding. And I, uh, I do tend to think, well, okay... I know how Hindu traditionalism works. I grew up in a traditional Hindu family. I grew up in a traditional Hindu culture. I am not traditionally Hindu. I've never been traditionally Hindu. Ever since I was, I, like, since birth, I've never been that way. Uh, I think I've always been a skeptical, agnostic humanist. That's just who I've always been, right? Um, so I never liked a lot of the traditional shit. But, you, you know, you, you got to show your parents a little bit. Uh, of, of respect, right? Uh, and and sometimes your parents are friend friends with shitty people. There's plenty of friends that my parents are. Uh, oh, there's there's plenty of my parents' friends that I politically disagree with, but have to be at least cordial uh, at a at a little family get together, right? And so the BJP guy gets uh, BJP donors get invited to her wedding. Uh, I think her second wedding. And her father has these connections. They're family friends because Mike Gabbard, who's also a Hindu. 
a uh, right wing conservative Hindu uh, at, at that. So that's why his friends are in the BJP, which is the right wing conservative party in India, uh, invited them to the wedding. Right. And, and at my wedding, there were plenty of people that I, I met and I was just like, who the fuck are you? But they were friends of my dad that he invited to the wedding and I had no fucking clue who they were. Right. So that kind of shit happens sometimes. She got money uh, from people that belonged to an organization, not the organization itself. Uh, people that were, were I, you know, what you could say, card carrying members of an organization called Friends Overseas Friends, Overseas Friends of the BJP. Again, these are not people that have direct ties to the BJP. They are just they they're they're overseas. It's like OCI, Overseas Citizens of of, of India. That that's kind of what this organization was. So the Modi connection was uh, a little complicated. Now she's kind of going and 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 championing what what he's doing, uh, and and you have to kind of think. The question I have is: Has she leaned more into this religion? Has she kind of gone into the more fundamental side of Hinduism, which she didn't before? Right, like she wasn't out there protesting Muslims in America, right? She wasn't doing any of that. She wasn't calling average uh, fucking Muslim citizens terrorists, you know, the, equa the, the parallel she's making now. So I wonder if she went further into the Hindu fundamentalism and then decided the Islamophobia is the direction that she needs to go, right? Because they kind of come in hand in hand. Then there's the LGBTQ shift, which is another one, which is like the anti-war one, which is just like, where the fuck is this coming from? Now, she does have a anti-LGBTQ background, right? Uh, and Alan McCloy talks about that. Uh, ba -ba Let me see what this quote is. Sorry, guys. Oh, this is a different thing. Uh, which we're going to get to, obviously. But... She does have a past where, where she has an anti-LGBTQ past, right? Uh, her dad was an anti-LGBTQ conservative activist while he was running for uh, office. And when she was in her, in her teens and in her 20s, she was part of the conversion camp that her dad would run. Pretty problematic, right? But she did a 180 at that point. She did a 180 at that point, right? People grow, people. But it wasn't a 180 over the course of like six months. This was a 180 over the course of a few years because people grow, people learn, people change. And that's okay. And when they do, it, it, it is our duty as people on this side of the fence to say, cool, man, welcome to the club. You know, let let's we'll 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 show you the ropes. We'll show you how to be an ally here. And she backed up her actions. She came out and she apologized twice. She put out a big video when she announced that she was running, and she said, "Look, I did this stuff in the past. I'm not I'm not denying stuff that I did in the past. This is a part of my past, but I'm not that way anymore. I don't believe in those things." And let me show you that I don't believe in those things by legislating accordingly. She got two bills passed, uh, two two bills passed that protect the LGBTQ community from discrimination, and she was convincing conservatives to join those bills, to sponsor those bills. And then all of a sudden, it's like, man, you go on Joe Rogan a couple of times, and then all of a sudden, you're worried about trans kids in sports. First of all, it's fucking sports. The only reason there's any major importance put into sports is because it's a money-making scheme, right? It's because these fucking student athletes uh, can get exploited and nobody can say anything about them because people will then go, well, they need to get an education. If they didn't want to get an education, maybe they shouldn't have gone to college. Maybe if they weren't ready to pay for the education, they should have gone to college. And some bullshit like that. And you're denying these trans kids from being able to fucking get an education. And, and she makes it about Title IX, which is already overly complicated and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and fucking unnecessary. And again, 
my point remains, and this was the same point I made last year, and it's the same point I will continue making when this fucking bullshit Title IX argument comes up. If you are truly going to say that you're a progressive, and I will say that Tulsi Gabbard is no longer claiming stake to that title. She has not said that she's a progressive. Uh, she keeps talking about the, sp the spirit of Aloha, uh, which I don't actually think she knows what that means, probably. But if you are going to say that you are, uh, let, let's not even say uh, title of progressive because she doesn't call herself that. But let's say that you're you're claiming to be on the side of the people, which which she does claim to be. Then why would you not try to come up with an inclusive solution to a complex problem, and and rel and and realistically, kind of a new issue that we really, as a society, haven't had a conversation about. Why wouldn't you look for an inclusive solution? Why was your knee-jerk reaction, and it is a knee-jerk reaction, to immediately go to the excluding solution? Where you make it financially harder for trans kids to survive in this country when it's already so hard for them to fucking survive in this country. Now this is the new this is the new stuff that she's that she's saying, right? And it and it's uh, in regards to uh, race and and Rittenhouse, uh, because she sided with the Rittenhouse verdict. Uh, I uh, disagree with the verdict. I disagree with Glenn Greenwald. I disagree with Matt Orfala. I disagree with Tulsi Gabbard here. Uh, it, it, I don't think the argument should be about self defense. I don't think that kid had uh, sure. Yeah. Somebody was coming after him, but Hey, don't the conservatives make this argument about black people all the time. Hey, you shouldn't have been there. You were, Hey, you shouldn't have been looking for trouble. He was clearly looking for trouble. Where, where are the conservatives in the, making that argument now? Oh, is it because he's white? That's why you don't want to make the fucking connection. The, the whole trial in and of itself. And, and I'm not going to go into a whole tirade here about the Rittenhouse verdict. Uh, I disagree with it. I think that kid is a murderer. He is a white supremacist. He has been seen partying with white supremacists. He makes white supremacist symbols. And there's a lot of videos and uh, documented evidence where he's talking about killing protesters and, and getting excited about doing that. This kid, it, it, you know, it, it, even Orphala was like, oh, well, he was there to be an EMT and clean up some stuff around there. No, no, no. He went to a Black Lives Matter protest to fucking kill protesters. That's why you had a gun strapped around your chest. You went to a peaceful protest sided with police that have been violent against protesters, violent against the people of that community that illegally shot a man seven times in the back, paralyzing him. And when there were protests against that, you brought a gun to the fucking protest. You were looking for trouble. And when trouble found you, you didn't know what to do because you're a fucking child that has been manipulated under propaganda because you fucking don't know better because you don't know how to think critically and you realize the reality of your situation and killed two people and injured another person. You can't say that this dude was there to be an EMT. Guess what, man? An EMT doesn't have a fucking rifle strapped to the front of their chest. I've never seen that in an ambulance. I've seen ambulance people. I've never seen one come out of an, I've never seen a paramedic come out with, an, with a fucking rifle strapped to their chest. That's what that kid was there to do. You can sit there and say it was self-defense. Okay, maybe, but he was looking for trouble. And when he got it, he didn't know what to do. That kid's a murderer and a white supremacist and a racist. He can sit there and go and talk to Tucker Carlson in, a, in, a, in his fucking dad's, you know, hand-me-down suit. And sit there and say he's not a racist, but actions speak louder than words, motherfucker. Actions speak louder than fucking words. And it shows you exactly how tilted, broken, and racist our criminal justice system actually is. They, you, he, they weren't allowed to call his, his victims victims. Evidence, was, uh, evidence of him partying with Proud Boys and saying shit like, I'm excited to kill protesters were were inadmissible evidence. He's flashing white supremacist signs. 
in photos. So here's what she says. This is what Tulsi Gabbard said, right? And about the the verdict. Uh, she says, uh, those those questioning the verdict had merely had their minds poisoned by, quote, pro-Antifa mainstream, a phrase she has repeated repeatedly used over the past week. She tweeted, with no evidence, the mainstream media and Antifa-loving politicians immediately labeled Rittenhouse a white supremacist terrorist. It's obvious that he was just a foolish kid who felt he needed to protect people and the community from rioters and arsonists because the government failed to do so. It, protesters, not rioters, protesters. And the dude he shot, other protesters were trying to get that guy out of a crowded space. He, he was mentally ill. He was not all there. He had just gotten out of the mental hospital. He shouldn't have been at the protest. He was trying to set shit on fire. He saw a kid with a gun and in his state went after him because a kid with a gun looks like somebody that wants to be fucked with. He, you said it. He's a foolish kid, right? Who felt he needed to protect people. He wasn't protecting people. He was there to kill protesters. He makes jokes about it. This is a colorblind argument, right? The, that, that's what this is. People that come out and make the statements of like, oh, well, I'm not really racist because I don't even see color, you guys. Oh, I'm colorblind. I don't see color. But continue to go on and discriminate communities of color and only, only say disparaging things about people of color and go, well, it's not because of their skin color. I don't see it. But it is about their ethnicity, right? And their ethnicity has a skin color attached to it. All they do is validate those racist ideas after they say, like, I'm not, it's it's basically the, the, the it's the catch-all way of saying I'm not racist, but enter racist comment here. This is not the end of it, right? To, the, the, this colorblind argument goes on because this is, this is some shit she tweeted, and this is just insanity is she goes, we are all connected. We are all children of God, no matter our race, religion, or or where we come from. So let us stop racializing, stop the racialization of everyone and everything. This is what our country and the world needs most right now. What? For a kid flashing white supremacist signs and saying he wants to kill protesters to go free? And basically set the precedent that if vig right wing vigilantes work hand in hand with cops, that they will go free because the justice system validates that sort of shit. Man, this is like outright insanity. Let's stop the racial. No, you you can't stop the racialization of issues directly connected to race. The criminal justice system is racist in America. We, we There's, I mean, a, a mountain of evidence. It, this is just dumbfounding to make a statement like this. If you want to stop the racialization of everything, and talk to your conservative friends. Because they're the ones that racialize everything. They're the ones that separate but equal, segregation. That is about race. And your skin color attached to that. That's what conservatives want. They're the ones racializing it. All we're doing is calling them out. And then when they get called out, they go, oh, you're just, you're just racialization. racialization. Blah, 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 blah. I'm honestly surprised she hasn't come out with a fucking critical race theory, uh, a stance on critical race theory, where she says some bullshit about critical race theory harming the children of America or some bullshit like that. The GOP has liked her, right? The like the, the right ends up liking her. 
uh, not the GOP. That's uh, uh, my mistake for for making that statement there. Um, but the right, the right does like her. There's a lot of commentators on the right. I mean, she's on Fox News. She was going on Fox News before, but primarily to talk about uh, anti-interventionism and fucking Julian Assange, right? Because Tucker Carlson was the only person on, on mainstream media, on corporate media, that was talking about Julian Assange. But the reason why the right ended up liking her was because she was bold and she was sticking it to the Democrats, right? Because she she was the vice chair of the DNC, backed Bernie Sanders. But this is not the same person that backed Bernie Sanders. Now, there is a, there is a chance that this 180 that she's made over the last year, um, and, it, and it is, again, it is, it is, you started seeing it around, uh, you know, the, the blatant shift around the time that she was no longer going to be uh, an elected official and she's a career politician, right? Um, so this is perhaps a shift for future political runs. Governor of Hawaii, uh, Senate, something, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see her make a bid in, in for, for 2024 under the Republican party or the libertarian party or something. So this is Lee's quote in regards to that, and I tend to agree with Lee uh, here. Even before I read this, I kind of had this thought. Uh, and when you know uh, someone that you look up to and and you're good friends with has a similar ideology, you're like ah, validation. You know, that's kind of the way that I I saw that. But um, this is Gabbard switch from championing the oppressed to championing the oppressors. Uh, it's tough to say whether she ever truly believes anything she says or merely just points her trajectory towards the greatest number of clicks and attention. Rather than sticking to her supposed beliefs, she now has recalibrated to the Fox News audience. Most of our ruling elite in most part, both parties are sociopaths who don't actually have empathy for others. Perhaps Tulsi Gabbard has always just been more of the same. And that is that is my belief is I don't know if she actually believed anything, right? Uh, people that supported her did, thought she did, and it very much appeared that she did believe all the things that she was saying. She was very convincing in that. And she held these beliefs for, for quite some time. It's not like it's not like in 2019, all of a sudden, she she decided to be anti-war. I mean, we, we, we looked at her anti-establishment, anti-interventionist uh, policies and beliefs well before 2019. I think I think around 2016 is when I heard of her because she stood up for burning. But all this sounds like is she's going to lean towards what is the popular beliefs and she can change them whenever she wants. I don't know if she believed in anything she was saying. I mean, right now, the evidence suggests that she doesn't, right? That's kind of what what things are veering towards, which really sucks. And and if you're a Tulsi supporter and you and you see this stuff and you see this kind of shift to the right uh, and you're disappointed, good, I'm right there with you, man. This is super disappointing. Uh, and, but for me, it's not like life-shatteringly disappointing because the second she endorsed Biden... Um, and and kind of just leaned into the to, to the Democratic establishment a little bit more when she dropped out of the race. Uh, I I basically was like, OK, that was the last one. That was the last politician that I think I want to back uh, or support or contribute to or talk about, um, you know, in and defend in any sort of way. Uh you know, I, I, I no longer believe I also don't really have that much of hope and faith in electoral politics. People that watch my channel regularly and fucking know that. <laughs> uh, I just, I just don't, you know, um, let's look at your comments. Bum, 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 bum. 
Cynical Girl, welcome to the stream. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh my goodness. The longer segments, it always takes me a little while to fucking find uh, the, the com where the comments started. Uh, just because it's a long segment and people say a lot of stuff. Uh, cool. There we go. Holly, uh, over on the Rockfin, uh, says endorsing Biden would broke the deal for me. Uh, yeah, I, I, that was when I kind of just realized, e I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Uh, you were channeling Graham Elwood. Yeah, Graham was a lot angrier about it than I was. I was just kind of like, I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done is kind of what I said. Gra Graham was a lot angry. Graham like demanded his money back and stuff, which was, I was like, man, you're mad. I I get, I get that you're mad, but damn, you're mad. Uh, Holly points out that, uh, yeah, we trained Osama bin Laden back in the eighties as well. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's part of the whole, let's destabilize a, a, a socialist democracy, <laughs> uh and 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 perpetuate war uh, you know which, which afghanistan is 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 a failure is a failure uh ba -ba -ba -ba, scrolling down oh in in terms of uh in terms of written house uh cynical girl points out he shot someone and then we're told uh, the best thing to do in lieu of, of shooting back is to rush them and disarm them. Uh, people were like, hey, stop that guy. They were doing their job. Yeah, there was a lot of people in that video that were saying, hey, stop that guy. Uh, yeah, I think that guy was... The, the, those those guys were were on point. And Cynical Girl points something else out. You're supposed to rush them and disarm them. That's sort of the way that you're supposed to because they can't shoot a whole bunch of people, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this, uh, but I do know that, that, you know, he was looking for trouble and when trouble found him, he didn't know how to handle it. And, and then two people died. Uh, and then everybody was like, Hey, stop that guy. That guy just killed that dude. Because to those protesters, they don't know who got shot. They, they, you know, it's not like they're the entire history of this person's life flashes in front of everybody's eyes when they die. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure Elon Musk is working on that kind of technology. Um, but yeah, and, and he fled the scene, too. That's the other thing, too, is is he fled the scene. If he truly believed that he was in self-defense, he would have dropped the gun and been like, oh, my God, I can't believe what I just did. Holy shit. I feel so remorseful. You're right. I should go turn myself in. But he ran to the cops to find protection. That's what Kyle Rittenhouse did. That's what Kyle Rittenhouse did. Uh, Holly says, I'm not my father's daughter. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, I'm not my father's kid either. We don't, well, my dad and I don't really have a great relationship, but you know, I, I, I don't want to be anything like my, my, my parents, uh, especially I don't want to be anything like my parents' flaws. Um, so I, I, my, my modeled my life rather differently where it seems like that's what Tulsi was, was doing in breaking out of some of that conversion ter therapy type stuff. Uh, and then just, you know, fell right back into it because it, it seems more profitable, right? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Yeah, I know I've, a, a lot of comments of, of about the uh, about the written house trial. There, 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 there is a lot to say. There is a lot to say in regards to that, and that's a whole different subject matter that I don't want to get into today. Uh, some Google points out she's center right. Yeah, center right is probably about where she is now, and I think she's tilting even further to the right. Um, you know, uh, uh, and it's a shame to fucking see that because it was it was cool to have somebody. Uh, you know, that was challenging the, the fucking military establishment. And that's kind of what she was doing, which was great. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Carl points out, is it, is it, is it a, sh a surprise or anything? Uh, a little bit. If you paid attention to what she was actually saying, not the media propaganda, uh, because she challenged the democratic establishment networks like CNN and MSNBC and NPR went after her unfairly. Uh, and I covered how unfairly they went after her because they were asking her 
more kind of gotcha questions than they would of anyone like Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or anything like that. And, and those are politicians you need to grill. First of all, I think you should be grilling all politicians, not selectively grilling politicians over things their parents did, which is what NPR did, um, or their religious beliefs, because guess what, man? You're not grilling. NPR isn't grilling Ted Cruz for being a shitty Christian, right? But all of a sudden, within mainstream media, the religion that I was born into, Hinduism, was being demonized because the Democratic establishment didn't like Tulsi Gabbard's anti-war, anti-establishment platforms. They didn't like the fact that she gutted Kamala Harris on, on the uh, debate stage. So your question, is it? Yeah, it, it is. It is a surprise to people that paid attention to what she was saying and looked into her history and her legislative history rather than just listening to what uh, corporate media had to say. So that's what my encouragement to you and folks like Carl is. Uh, hey, man, you got to you got to veer away from that corporate media because they're not your friends. And you also. I'm I'm willing to accept that. Yeah, it sucks. I I wish that things were different. I backed this individual, and and now it sucks that I backed this individual, right? But I backed this individual for very good reasons, and I've shared those reasons. And I'm willing to admit that the person I backed is now kind of a piece of shit. But that doesn't change my opinion on what I believed in. I didn't believe in those things because Tulsi Gabbard believed in those things. I believed in those things because I believed in those things. I just happened to gravitate towards Tulsi Gabbard because she also believed in those things and was vocally saying those things. Um, so so hope that clears that up uh, for folks that have uh, a question like that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jim says I donated all of a dollar to Tulsi uh, more more than the rest. By the time I was done with Bernie for a bit, yeah, I, I was I was I was disappointed in Bernie as well. Um, I donated to Tulsi's campaign. I'm not asking for my money back, but I also didn't. I don't think I donated the same amount that Graham Elwood donated. I think Graham Elwood probably donated a much larger amount than I did. Uh, and yeah, it's a disappointment, man. When you when you financially back these candidates, you know, um, you don't. Uh, you don't want them to let you down. And when they do, it, it still sucks. Uh, but because I had resigned myself in 2020 to no longer kind of champion a candidate, but rather champion ideas and people and the labor movement um, and, and, and veer away from electoral politics, um, I, think, I think my disappointment is significantly reduced, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 